Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Andrew, and today I'm going to teach you how to find the x-intercepts of the following function, x to the 6th minus 2x to the 4th minus 3x squared. The first thing is we have to have a general understanding of what an x-intercept is. So just pretend we have a certain function. Eh, why don't I make it look like this? All right, let's pretend we have a certain function. And this function crosses the x-axis. Okay, remember the horizontal axis is x, and generally speaking, the vertical is y. It could also be known as f of x. These two are basically substitutable. All right, so that could be equal to f of x. Now, the x-intercepts are going to be the values of x, right, or the coordinates of these points right here, where the function crosses the x-axis, right? Therefore, they're x-intercepts, right? They're intercepting the x-axis. Now, it turns out that you know something special about these two points. Do you know what that is? What do these two points have in common? Now, there can be actually a couple of things. I mean, if you really think about it, you're like, well, they both lie on the x-axis. I 100% agree. Uh, that would be one thing that they have in common. They also have something else in common. They have something else in common in terms of their y values. What do you think they are? Or what do you think it, it, it is? Right. Exactly. These two points have a y value of 0. In other words, the x-coordinate is unknown, but the y-coordinate is known. The x-coordinate is unknown of that point, and the y-coordinate, though, is known. They're both zero, and that's going to be something you have to remember every time you're solving for x-intercepts, that the y-value, or in other words, the function's value, will be zero at these points, okay, which are the x-intercepts. Now, that is very informative because that allows us to now plug in zero for f of x into our function, okay? So now I'm going to rewrite this as zero is equal to x to the sixth, minus 2x to the fourth, minus 3x squared. So pretty simple so far. Now what I want you to do is before you continue with the math, just get an idea of what we're trying to do, all right? What I'm trying to do now, and what this, remember what a, what a graphical picture is, it's just a picture of all the x values that this function can obtain, which by the way are infinite, right? Because there is no restriction on the domain, and then the corresponding output. All right, the f, the f of x value or the y value. So basically what I'm trying to figure out right now is I'm trying to identify the values of x here, the value of x, the value of x, and the value of x. That makes this whole right-hand side equal to zero. All right, that, that's what I'm trying to do right now. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Now, if you just take a step back and you just think about it a little bit, just forget about all the math, right? Just think about it. Do you know a value right now for x that would cause this whole right-hand side to go to zero? Did you say zero itself? If you did, excellent, excellent. And if you didn't, don't worry about it, all right? But it is a zero, right? If, if this, if you plug in zero for x there and you plug in zero for x there and you plug in zero for x there, this whole right side is zero. And that makes then this a this whole equation excuse me a true math statement because zero better equals zero right so well, you actually found without even doing any math you actually found out an x-intercept okay one of the x-intercept values is going to be when x is equal to zero okay remember you'll always know the y value of that point the y value will equal zero and wait a minute if x equals zero and y is zero that's oh the origin okay so the graph and by you know the the graph i drew over here all right, had no relationship to this thing. I just drew a random shape, all right? Um, in any case, it's going to go through the origin, okay? Uh, can you think of another value? Now you might say, oh, my goodness. Okay, that one was easy, but this one's a little harder, right? X to the 6, is it going to be 1? Should I plug in a 1? Now that's where the algebra comes in, okay? That's where the process comes in. Now the whole goal of this problem is I want to start to factor out things I have in common amongst each of these terms, okay? That's the goal. You want to think about factoring. So the greatest common factor between each three of these terms is going to be an x squared, okay? And then basically every term now to find the corresponding value I should be plugging into my parentheses here, you're going to divide everything by x squared, okay? So this would be then x to the fourth, the first term. Then when you divide this by x squared, right, that becomes then 2x to the second. When we divide, divide that by x squared, excuse me, that just becomes simply 3, right? So it's hopefully so far so good. All right. Now, I like this form because it's now just a little bit of a game, okay? It's like if this term somehow goes to zero, right? If I can say, if I can figure out when this term right here is zero, what x value would make this term go to zero, then I know 
that zero multiplied, because that's the operation between this term and this term, that zero multiplied by this whole thing is zero. I, I could care less what this is. I don't care what it is, right? And just so you know, if x were zero, right, then zero squared is obviously zero. This would be zero, this would be zero, and that would be minus three. And what do you think this works out to be, right? Inside the parentheses there, it's gonna be negative three, and that's still zero. Um, so uh, zero, right, because they're multiplied. So that's what I mean by I really don't care what's in here. All right. Uh, so my goal here is I'm like, okay, I set this up into now two problems for myself. All right. I break this up. I have my two terms here. They're multiplied. That's the point of the factoring because we can now start to, you know, create some math equations now that X squared, I want that to be equal to zero. Or in other words, I want to figure out the X value when this term equals zero. Okay. Conversely, I'm going to make, let me choose the same color. Conversely, now I am going to set this one, x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 3, equal to 0. All right. Now, the 1 is pretty easy on the left-hand side, right? You just square root both sides, and the square root of 0 is literally just 0. You can write plus or minus 0, but does that even, I mean, it's 0, right? Plus 0, positive 0, negative 0, it doesn't, it's just 0. So guess what? You told me intuitively that one of the x-intercepts should be Zero. And look, you just proved it to yourself with doing a little algebra. All right. So again, I'm going to leave it up here. X is equal to zero. That's one of the intercepts. That's one of the values of X that makes the function zero. Now I have to work on this side. And you're like, oh my God, I got a quartic. What? Well, bear with me for a second. Okay. Imagine I gave you a very similar problem. Imagine I gave you X squared minus 2X minus 3 is equal to zero. Would you know how to solve this now, or this whole thing? You might say, oh, yeah, that actually looks familiar. Isn't that a quadratic, Andrew? And I'm going to say, yeah, you're exactly right. That's a quadratic. So how do you solve that? I can use my quadratic formula. Yes, you can. Right? You can also, by the way, use your calculator if you want to. I, I, have, a, uh, I have a video actually on a program where you can program the quadratic function. Watch how cool it is. Check out the uh, link in the description below All right, for this. So watch, I'm going to execute my quad program. I'm literally just going to plug in my values. Okay, If you go back to here, A is 1. B is, so A is 1, B is negative 2, and then C is negative 3. So watch, 1, negative 2, no, not negative, neg not negative decimal point, and then uh, negative 3. And look, it gives me my X values, okay, that the X value here is going to be 3, and the X value also, because remember, you're going to get two values potentially, uh, negative 1, all right? Now you might say, okay, great, I'm going to look that link up in the description. I'm going to watch the video program, the calculator, do all that stuff. Great. But how would you do it without it? Because maybe my teacher won't let me use it, right? Well, just remember, you're trying to figure out two numbers that multiply to negative three, but yet then add to negative two, right? So what you would have chosen or would think about choosing is going to be the uh, negative three, okay, and a positive one. All right, so these are your factors here, x minus 3 and x plus 1. And then when you solve this thing, guess what? It's the same logic as what we did over here, right? You know, like, oh, you're like, oh, yeah, I always take this term, set it equal to 0, and then I take this term, set it equal to 0. But did you ever think about why you actually do that? You actually do it for the exact reason I explained over here. You see, that's what happens in math. It's like we, we start to focus too much on the process, okay, and we, we're just like, oh, yeah, I just know to do that. And we're not really thinking about why we're doing it. So then when you get to a point like this, you don't recognize the pattern because you're used to just seeing the pattern in this context, right, where you're going to take x minus 3, set it equal to 0, and then x plus 1, set it equal to 0. You just know automatically how to do that. But you most likely didn't recognize it here. Most likely. Not everyone. I'm not saying that. But most likely, probabilistically, all right, um, a majority, I bet, would not recognize this. So why? Because we're not considering why we're doing it over here. You're, we just know it as terms of a process that, hey, I recognize the pattern, I do it there. And you don't recognize the similar pattern here, where it's two factors multiplied by one another. And this is also two factors multiplied by one another. And they both equal zero. That's the pattern. Okay. But in any case, you would have broken this up because, hey, if this thing goes to zero, then zero, remember, multiplied by whatever the heck that is, I could care less. It's zero. For the same exact reasons, when you solve this, right, you add the three on over, so it's a positive three, 
and then x would be equal to a negative 1, and omg -ness, go back to the calculator. Look at the calculator, right? I mean, the calculator told that to you also. All right. Now, these are actually going to be the values, okay? Uh, almost the values, all right? I'll explain in a second. But you can easily solve now, so let me just erase this. You can easily solve this similar value, uh, this similar problem, right? Now, it's the same process to do this one except one difference, right? You're noticing this is to the fourth, this is squared. This is to the second, this is to the first. And this term has no no x to it, right? Actually, technically, you could think about it as x to the zero, but we'll just consider that there's no term there. There's only one difference then, and the only difference shows up in your x values, right? And therefore, the only difference in this, value, in this uh, factor, okay, in the factors here, should be also in the x value when you actually start to factor this out. So what you're going to do is you're going to think exactly identically to how you perform this problem, right? You set up your factors, okay? You have your x, you have your x, and then you're thinking two numbers that multiply to negative 3 but yet add to negative 2, and again, it's the same thing, okay? x minus 3 and x plus 1, but when you now, if you were to think about foiling this, right, to go backwards, you would get x times x, and x times x is x squared. It's not x to the fourth. You just make one little adjustment, squared and squared, and guess what? Everything's right in the world. Because the, the, the pattern is that if you had, let's say, x squared, then you had x to the one. Notice that the two is half of, or two, well, excuse me, the, the one is half of the two, all right? And then there is no x term there. And notice that the two over here is half of the four, and then there is no x term over here. That's the pattern, okay? So you can apply this factoring technique anytime you have a very similar um, setup, right? If you had x to the sixth plus something x cubed plus then no uh, some other factor there, excuse me, some other term without a uh, variable, you could do the same exact process as you're doing over here, all right? That's the pattern. Now, uh, okay. So now how do we solve these? Again, same thing. If this thing goes to zero, or if this thing goes to zero, then I know that this whole side has to go to zero because they're multiplied together. Okay, same exact reasoning as I did over here, same reasoning as over here. All right, so I break this up into two parts now. I basically set that one factor equal to zero, draw a little line. I set the next factor equal to zero. All right. And now all you're going to do is solve. Okay, solve it. So uh, add three on over. And this is going to be x squared is equal to 3. And then you have to square root it, right? Now, when you square root it, just be careful. I'm just going to write the results over here that x will be equal to technically plus or minus radical 3. Okay, because when you when you think backwards, you could when you square a value either positive or negative, it's going to work out to be positive overall. Okay, so you're going to you're going to have those two values, basically a positive 3 and a negative 3. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to write x is equal to positive one third, uh, excuse me, positive radical three, and also x will be equal to negative radical three. All right. Now that takes care of that side. Why don't we do this one now? Subtract the one on over. Subtract the one on over. X squared is equal to negative one, and we're like, oh wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. What? X squared is equal to radical one. Im imaginary numbers? No, 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 no. We're only finding real values here. Okay, real x-intercepts. You cannot take the square root of a negative number, right? You cannot do it. Now, you might say at this point, oh, man, I definitely screwed something up. No, you didn't. As long as your logic is right, you go back and double check. As long as your logic logic is right, just follow it through. If this doesn't make sense, that means it doesn't exist. The real root does not exist here. It's just some imaginary thing. Don't worry about it. We're focusing on real value. So this part is basically just irrelevant. So what we should be seeing now is that these would be the total, because I basically solved the problem fully now. These are the roots, okay? Those are the roots. Then maybe what I'll do is I'll bring the negative value up a little higher, okay? Now, um, you can calculate right, if you don't like this term, radical 3. You can always go to your calculator, just hit second radical, and then just type in 3. And you can get a little decimal there, right? So you want to know that this decimal, the radical, the radical 3 part, or it would be equivalent to 1.732 or so. That might help us later, all right? But those are the no, those are now the coordinates, okay? Uh, the x values of the uh, x-intercepts. So if you're still not convinced, what you can always do is use your calculator. All right, go to y equals and plug in your function now. 
x raised to the sixth minus now two x raised to the fourth. Oh, sorry, I messed that all up up there. <laughs> I forgot to hit the over button. X. Okay, there we go. Uh, don't forget to hit over. All right, two x raised to the fourth. See, we all make mistakes. Oh, I made it again. Just don't make it twice. You don't want to make the same mistake twice. It's okay if you do. Anyway, graph it. Okay, I'm going to go to zoom actually first. I'm going to go to hit standard. And there's my graph. Okay. Now, if I were to, let me actually try to zoom in on this. Let me see. Go to zoom and I'm going to hit two. It might not work out perfect. Oh, yeah, this actually does work pretty nicely. Okay. So ready? Let's take a look. Now, each one of these tick marks, when you zoom in, each one of the ticks on the horizontal axis represents one unit. All right. Now, look. If you go, this is negative one, and then when you hop over to this point, it's not negative two, negative two is over here, but doesn't this almost look like you went another three quarters or so, right? Doesn't it look like this was negative one, and then this is another negative three quarters or so, and therefore that should be about negative 1.75 ish, ish, ish. Well, that's what negative radical three would have been, right? Because the decimal value, you know, that makes a little more sense would be about 1.73 or 1.75. Notice how this graph, so that that kind of proves the negative one. Not not proves it, I mean, you might want the exact number. I'll get it in a second. Um, look at how this intersects the origin, right? How it touches and passes through the origin point. That's what we said it's going to do. All right, and then also similarly, on the right-hand side, it's gonna be one and then another three quarters. So that's about one and three quarters, positive. So I think we're on the right track here, okay? Now the thing is, you might say, well, how do I prove that? To, you know, how, do, how can I use the calculator now to, to do, to actually find the value? So what you can do, go to zoom standard again, because we're gonna zoom out a little bit, okay. Now what you can do is you can hit second calc, and then you can go to zero, all right? What that means is that you're gonna calculate the zero means that you're gonna calculate the x-intercept, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit over. And what I wanna do is I wanna try to find Oh, am I even going to get close? Nah, this 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 might be a little rough, but I want to try to get um, I want to try to find the x-intercept right here. Okay, can you, hopefully you can see the cursor. Now, what I need to do is I need to select a left-bound point, so I'm going to hit enter there. Okay, then I have to go and hit the cursor to the right-bound. Now, don't hit that one because that's going to be the point in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter there, and then I'm going to guess. Now, here's the thing: it doesn't right. I know this point isn't exactly on the X. It's okay, it should be close enough, but you should see the value coming up pretty close now. Hit enter. And do you notice now, look at this, negative 1.732051, blah, blah, blah. And do you notice here that the value up here would have been basically that, right? Negative radical three is negative 1.732, okay? So that's how you would have found it, you know? And then what you can do is you can do the rest for the other side of the graph and that's it. And that's how you can kind of, you know, prove it to yourself more or less. So that's basically it, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this helps. And uh, if you can like and subscribe, all right, I really appreciate it very much. And uh, why not? Even tell some of your classmates. All right, I really appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. Bye.